new info about heroic scenarios in 5.3, more PvP changes, and everything else about 5.3 you'd ever want to know. Hey guys, I'm Jess, and this is the WoW Update, brought to you by Curse and MMO Champion. First up is general patch notes. They've added a new battleground, Deepwind Gorge, which is a 15-player battleground for level 90s, as well as a new arena map, Tiger's Peak. Four new scenarios are added, Battle on the High Seas, Blood in the Snow, Dark Heart of Pandaria, and The Secrets of Ragefire. Additionally, Blizz is adding new heroic scenarios. We now know that these require a group of three, rather than being able to queue and get a random group to complete, and they require an item level of 480 to queue for them. Your first heroic scenario of the day will give you $120 and a heroic cache of treasures, which has a chance to drop spec-appropriate epic item level 516 gear, and you get an additional $30 for completing the bonus objectives. Every heroic scenario after the first gives $70, an additional $30 for completing the bonus objectives, and a greater cache of treasures. The Escalation Quest campaign lets you engage in the Baron's Conflict, and one of the first things Horde players will notice is Corcoran Guard's pretty much everywhere. This leads up to the Battle of Razor Hill questline. Also, some of the new scenarios in 5.3 will have an intro by Lorewalker Cho, starting with Blood in the Snow. A new quest in the Escalation campaign, The Old Seer, reveals the final shot and rewards eye level 502 boots. As for the Battlefield Baron's questline, the Dark Spear Rebellion Quartermaster's items for sale have been revealed. He sells both useful and purely novelty items, such as the Leighton Corcoran armor set, which can be combined with the Radical Mojo from the new weekly quest, to create a piece of item level 476 spec-appropriate gear. And he also sells Grifta's authentic troll shoes. They give you that real trollish look. 5.3 also continues Rathion's questline, which rewards you with an eye level 600 cloak, and ends with you waiting for 5.4 and the Siege of Orgrimmar. Additionally, the Test of Valor achievement from this questline now only requires 3,000 Valor, down from 6,000, to complete. Great Jade Serpent, hear our plea. There will be several Brawler's Guild updates. First, defeating some of the new bosses gives you access to Brawler's Guild shirts. A new VIP lounge has been added on the Zeppelin circling the arena for rank 8 players. And the Alliance Fight Pit floor has been raised, and spectator totems have been added for easier viewing of the fight. A new mount has been added as a reward for reaching rank 10, and Card Trader Ami now sells cards that allow you to fight bosses from ranks you've already defeated. And the final general patch note is that the experience needed to increase from level 85 to 90 has been reduced by 33%. As for class updates, the hunters will get an additional 30 stable slots for pets. Woo! Gotta catch them all! Next up, quest updates. Shadow Pan and the August Celestial's daily quests no longer have a faction prerequisite to be revered with the Golden Lotus, and all bosses in Mogushan Vaults, Heart of Fear, and Terrace of the Endless Spring will now have a chance to drop either a Sigil of Power or a Sigil of Wisdom. Moving on, as for creature changes, creatures that are outdoors in the world and are level 90 and above now have a chance to drop lesser charms of good fortune. Rare spawns in Pandaria, except for Zandalari War Scouts and Zandalari Warbringers, and bosses in Battlefield Barons will now always drop lesser charms of good fortune. Rare spawns in Pandaria, except for those on the Isle of Thunder, now have a chance to drop a bind on pickup invitation to the Brawler's Guild. Undasta's Spitfire Beam no longer increases in damage with each jump, deals a flat 200,000 damage up from 150,000, and jumps to 99 targets, up from 20. And the shiny pile of refuge it drops now has a chance to contain a primal egg and a number of dinosaur bones. Next is pet battle updates. Lots of new pets are coming in 5.3, such as the Bad Robot Pet and the Blossoming Ancient, which changes colors with the seasons. A new weekly quest for max level matchmaking PvP pet battles has been added, and also they fixed an issue where pet abilities that had a chance to stun weren't working correctly. Also, 5.3 will allow players to spectate pet battles, where before if you came across a player battle with wild pets, you'd see a player just kind of standing there. Now onto raids and dungeon scenarios. The new loot specialization menu is in, which allows you to choose what spec you want loot for when you get bonus rolls, raid finder gear, and Pandarian quest rewards. Protection for bad luck streaks have been added to bonus rolls. Each bonus roll that does not provide loot has a progressively better chance to award loot to the player. Bonus rolls, Treasures of the Thunder King, Amber Encased Treasure Pouch, Cache of Mogu Riches, and Dividends of the Everlasting Spring now have a small chance to award a larger than usual amount of gold. Moving on, tons of PvP changes. Now Blizzard's going to be making PvP more accessible to new players and narrowing the PvP versus PvE gear gap. What they've also promised to do is make it easier for players to begin mid-season and catch up reasonably. They've mostly removed resilience as a gear stat, and all players now have a base resilience of 65%, but you can still use resil gems and enchants. However, the amount of resilience and PvP power on gems has been cut in half. The amount of PvP power rating needed to get 1% PvP power has changed from 265 to 400, but new PvP enchants have also been added along with Vanity Elite gear. Rolls have been added when queuing for random battlegrounds, and an eye level cap of 496 has been added to battlegrounds, rated battlegrounds, and arenas. 
Picking up the Alliance of Horde Flag while in a raided battleground now increases damage taken by 50% for characters in a tanking specialization and increases damage taken by 20% for characters in a non-tanking spec, whereas previously carrying the flag increased damage by 25% regardless of spec. In the Dalaran Arena, steps have been installed in the two remaining corners of the arena, and in the Eye of the Storm, the starting platforms have been lowered. For profession changes, mining and herbalism can now be leveled from a low skill level, and the engineering mount and pet will not be added in 5.3. Next up is item changes. Item upgrades have returned. For PvE items, those upgradable by Valor now require 250 Valor to upgrade per four item levels, for a total of 500 Valor for eight item levels per item. And that's retroactive to all items that use Valor. Items upgradable by Justice now require 750 Justice to upgrade per eight item levels, for a total of 750 Justice for eight item levels per item. And again, that's retroactive to all items that use Justice. For PvP items, items from Malevolent Gladiator's Conquest and the Dreadful Gladiator's Honor are still upgradable at their original cost, and no other PvP items are upgradable. You can now transmog right from the bank or void storage without using a special add-on, and they've reduced the amount of Justice, Honor, and Darkmoon Fair tickets needed to upgrade heirloom items by 60%. A new achievement and reward have been added for obtaining 200 mounts. Eye of the Black Prince can now be used to apply a prismatic socket on reborn weapons. Justice heirloom vendors now have heirloom shields in stock. Shadow Pan Assault had rep changes and PvP trinkets have also been changed, but there's going to be more on those when we know more about them. Unclaimed Black Market Container was added to the Black Market Auction House, and several new mounts have been added, such as the Fey Dragon and Hearthsteed. Finally, a few last miscellaneous updates. 5.3 is making it faster to move through the Dungeon Journal by putting boss selections for an instant on the left, and Loot Abilities Model on the right. Or you can use the Otis add-on to make going through the boss list faster if you don't want to wait for this in 5.3. Blizz is adding an in-game browser, but it's limited to the Battle.net support site only. You can't use it for the official forums or even for any outside websites. And lastly, Gammon's health has been increased. He's now a rare elite level 90 with 39 million health. Well, that does it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. Enjoy the game.